Hi everyone. Well, we're past Halloween and I hope you had a nice Halloween this year. Um, but I had this footage left of me creating uh, some cards. Um, I'm gonna start with two backgrounds and then finish up one. Um, I'm just using plain uh, acrylic paint. I've got some gold there and purple and a little bit of yellow. <coughs> and I am drying the layers that I put on in between because I don't want them to mix on on my uh, card so um, you see me put some paint on my background that's just left over uh, from the brush and from my palette and I don't want to use uh, waste anything so I just paint it on my uh, blotting paper and then use that later for backgrounds or whatever so I'm just going to put down some yellow as you can see and because I dried it uh, it will not mix with the, the purple and just go over it and this is a semi translucent paint so you can see that it is not opaque and it just covers a little bit of the purple now that's how I do the whole card and you can see if you just put on two layers then it will show up as yellow. Um, no idea behind it why I put the paint uh, where I put it. <laughs> Just uh, putting it there where I like it. And some people have the rules, rules of three or rules uh, or uh, of a triangle or so. Um, but I don't think like that. I just put the paint down. That's basically it. I really love this bluish it's blue green color from um, Amsterdam it's one of my favorites it is a bit of a sea blue sea green and I like how it covers the the purple and well that's how I go about it trying to put in some blocks and then go in with the over with the purple again so basically using those three colors uh, this is a Prussian blue four colors <laughs> um, and just mixing them up it has a really nice Halloween vibe to it and this is how I cover I'm just going to show you how I do it <coughs> entirely because I got asked where do you put the paint how do you do it how do you create the layers well just like this just putting it down just putting one over the other and see how it looks the thing about acrylics is that you can't uh, uh, undo it so just accepting that sometimes it doesn't look the way you thought about it how it will look uh, this is just a plain gesso uh, that I'm putting on because it's translucent you can see uh, that every other layer that I put down on that ATC is shiny through and if you don't want that or if you do want to blur it a little bit just put it on, uh, down another layer and you can see there was a little spot that wasn't dry so I've got a little bit of purple bluish paint in my white I don't mind and look trying to match the two <laughs> uh, as I said I'm just going to use uh, one of them the largest one and the other one I made uh, uh, a little card from my 100 day project that's already well been going on about 200 days <laughs> and so I uh, loving this uh, number stencil um, I don't know who it's from but I really like it. Some of you might know. Uh, gold paint. This is a really nice gold paint. It's from our. Um, it's not from a craft store, but um, uh, it's called for the Dutch people. It's from Hornbach. Uh, that's kind of like a DIY store. Uh, Lucas. It's called Cryol Studio, and it's number four six one two gold, and it's really opaque. I really love uh, using it. You can see it here. Um, I'm uh, putting it through a stencil, uh, using a little makeup sponge, uh, just dabbing it, 
and see how it looks and here and there I do a little bit of a touch up with my brush just uh, because I want it to sparkle just a little bit more and you can see how beautiful gold this is and then I you can see I just want a little bit more uh, opaqueness that's what I want to say it isn't the right word I think I just want it to be more opaque I like that and this is how I like to create when I'm not using paper this is how I create my backgrounds for my ATCs and other uh, things that I create with just plain acrylic paints doesn't it have to be expensive paint that's really not necessary at all for this type of work well that's my opinion anyway and just create whatever you like okay trying it with my heat gun as you can see and then we go to uh, step two uh, what I didn't show you that I was searching through my stash of images to find a nice image and I couldn't find it it took me about uh, 15 minutes to find something uh, so uh, I cut that out of the video but I did also cut the stamping of the those white lines that you see on my cards that's just a regular stamp from um, I think it's from Marlene her stamp set uh, this is the pumpkin from um, the Tim Holtz uh, Halloween uh, it, stamps I think I'm searching if I have them lying around I don't know oh here I've got them um, it's the stamp set from what's it called snarky cat Halloween that's the latest one so I really like that that's I find them very expensive uh, so I don't buy a lot of those uh, stamp sets but this one I really liked and I like Halloween so and I like cats so really lovely so I'm just going to color them in with my Prismacolors <clears throat> and um, I left well a lot of it in so you can see how I color I've got these four um, colors here and I should ro uh, have written down what I'm using I think this is 916 uh, it's the bright, uh, bright yellow and I've got the orange there and I think it's pomegranate and I'm going to stand up now and trying to reach my Prismacolor box and I think I've got it. it's pomegranate it's orange it's uh, indeed 916 I think uh, there's a little tiny I think it's canary yellow and a little dark one and that's I'm reaching it I'm not sure what's it called it might be cherry black or Tuscan red I think it's Tuscan red but you can use whatever you like um, but I'm just going to show you what I do I start with one layer the lightest one um, and I'm just coloring in the brightest spots and this is an easy stamp because the shadows are already uh, in the stamp uh, so you can see what you need to color a little bit dark than uh, the other spots where there are no black lines so I'm going over it with the orange that's my second color oh indeed I can I can read it now it's Tuscan red that's the darkest one that I'm going to use so I'm just going over it and not don't press too hard uh, because um, it depends on the paper that you're using but this is just a regular mixed media paper and if I press too hard then um, how do you call that the grainage of the um, the paper will disappear it will get flat and I can't put any other colors on top of it anymore so um, as I progress I am uh, putting uh, instead of um, using uh, force or pressing too hard I'm just going to build it up layer by layer that gives the same effect and then I am usually blending it with my blending pencil 
so going over it with the, another color and you can see where I go I go on top of where the black lines are that's an indication but if you uh, don't have these black lines just think about where the light is coming from and where the shading uh, needs to go uh, if you don't know you might just use a lamp uh, use a prop like an apple or an orange and put it down and let the light shine on your apple and then just watch what happens with the shading but there are tons of tons of videos on how to color and how to shade so just if you're interested just do a, a search on YouTube and you'll find thousands of video about that but this is just the way I like to do it and then the darkest color and this doesn't seem much just yet but watch if you use a blending pencil uh, it will um, uh, just move these colors around and blend them I like to blend with the lightest color that I started with uh, don't do it on every drawing but you can see I'm pulling the darkest color that I put out I'm pulling it uh, um, in so I can get a, you know, a nice gradient of color and then the lightest yellow spot so where the most light is will just stay yellow uh, and the other colors will blend with each other and it just looks nice this is quite red if you want you just use instead of the Tuscan red you use a, a, a darker orange if you got it if you like that but I really love the tone of my little pumpkin going in with the orange and just go over it again do it again and again and uh, as I said if you press too hard in the beginning you can't do this so you have to have a uh, light touch and then you create the sparkliest uh, the sparkliest the sparkles the sparkles this <laughs> I don't know how to say it but you can see that where I don't go with my orange then it's yellow and it will look as if the light is shining on top of those spots now I think I'm searching for my blending uh, tool uh, I think I might I'm not sure what I'm doing but uh, um, oh, yeah, I think I need green as well because that little stem needs to be green uh, so here yeah you can see I'll use it a lot I, I didn't show you I'm sorry for that but I'm going over it with my blending uh, pencil um, just to uh, move the color around just a little bit and I colored the stem as you can see with the green did it in the same fashion as I did the the, the orange color so it needed a little bit of more more of spookiness so I'm just using this um, spider web and it's from a very old graphic 45 series I think it's a uh, happy haunting and uh, just glued it down here as you can see and now I'm searching for my white Posca pen I tried several white pens and uh, I think the Posca is the one that I like the most oh this is uh, just going in with a little bit of a light touch on my little stem because it didn't stand out too much and then I'm almost done with this card Um, I did as I do here use a sharpie to go around my pumpkin to make sure that there are no white edges and I do the same on my ATC before I am backing it with black uh, <coughs> and that will make it stand out a little bit more going in with well, my white Posca as you can see I made some little dots and I'm just going to highlight those white those spots to make it shine even more and well that's the way I like to do it and you can use watercolor that might be quicker or use paint but I find coloring very re relaxing so if I'm stressed or something I just take out my coloring book and my pencils and I 
color for two hours and then I'm over it <laughs> if it was that simple but you know what I mean it just relaxes you for two hours so that's good now you can see it is a little bit smaller than the regular ATC card but I don't mind it looks nice when it's packed with black it stands out just a little bit more and now I'm just going to search for some um, words to go on them and I've got these Tim Holtz uh, stickers I love them I will not say that I collect them but uh, the haunting ones the Halloween ones I do like a lot so I'm using those just because they've got also some pictures in them as well like this one so um, I'm just going to search through them and just find something that matches my card sorry just a sip of my tea um, well this was the one the Jack o' Lantern last night and searching if I do want to put some more on it but I didn't do that so this is my card I'm just going to glue it down with my glue stick and then I'm going to put my uh, uh, name on the back and then I've got another ATC just a fun one to do for you on this video I hope you liked it and uh, uh, I'm not gonna say till next time because I'm not sure um, when I will be back but uh, I hope you enjoy this one for now anyway like that almost done just want to press it down but my fingers are just a little bit dirty so I'm just using this little white paper to be able to press it down a little bit more firmly than otherwise like that almost done yes well thank you for watching again uh, leave a comment if you like subscribe if you like and uh, we'll see each other next time bye bye